Can you imagine a time in which you're paying for someone's poop? Well, that's the stuff that you're flushing down the toilet. Well, that time is now. We are already doing that. That's called a fecal transplant. And poop is no longer just thrown away like trash, but it's actually a novel medical therapy to treat serious life-threatening gut conditions. But it's optimal not to have to get someone else's poop. So this is where prevention is the key. And you can potentially avoid these serious complications, keep up your gut health so that you don't find yourself one day needing to get someone else's poop. This video is going to be packed with tips. So get that paper and pencil and let's talk about how you can keep your gut healthy. Have you ever been told you need to finish your antibiotics? Well, that's not always good for you. If you can avoid antibiotics, that's always the best thing to do. But sometimes you can't avoid it. And this is where keeping your antibiotics to the shortest possible course is beneficial for your gut health. Ask your doctor, do you really need seven days of antibiotics for a simple, uncomplicated urinary tract infection when it's been shown that three days is as effective? Do you really need antibiotics for that sore throat when the majority of respiratory infections are from viruses? Now, have them take a culture of your infected site to make sure that you don't need antibiotics and to make sure that they're going to work for you. The last thing you want to do is to take an antibiotic for nothing. Antibiotics will destroy your gut health, it's going to destroy your immune system, and it may not even be effective at killing the organism if you don't have that culture. You've spent a lifetime to build this gut microbiome that your mom and your grandma gave you. Don't ruin it with taking antibiotics. Clindamycin, cephalosporins, fluoroquinolones, and penicillins are notorious for killing your gut microbes and activating immune dysregulation in your body. And this is where deadly conditions that need fecal transplants like Clostridium difficile occurs. About half a million Americans every year get Clostridium difficile infections. Now, if you've heard of it, you either have had it yourself or you know someone who's had it. Now, imagine yourself having profound watery diarrhea that burns your butt. Now, add some dead fish to it. That's C. diff diarrhea. You don't want to get it. The disease doesn't just affect your gut. It causes excruciating pain and it can leave your gut and cause heart failure and kidney failure. It can be deadly. I've seen people lose their colon and their life from getting C. diff infections. Don't think you're immune just because you've gotten it before. Just like many infections, having previous episodes does not mean you're not going to get it in the future and get it even worse. Unfortunately, this is not just a hospital-acquired problem. This is rising in their community. This is why washing your hands with soap and water is always good for your health. In order for your health to be healthy, your bacteria has to be healthy. And this is where you need to feed them. And the food they eat is fiber. That's where picking your foods wisely is super important. So if you're not eating fibrous whole food, not the stuff that you're getting from a bottle or a bag, you're not feeding your trillions of friends that are actually keeping you healthy. They want to keep you healthy, but they can't do it unless they get fueled with food too. Now your gut bacteria live in the bottom of your digestive tract. So if you're eating processed carbohydrates like breads, cookies, bars, candy, it's never going to get to the end of your digestive tract. You're in fact, you're going to absorb all those nutrients before your gut microbiome sees any. And when they're starving, they literally will go find food and they will turn around and eat you. There's actually a lining of mucus that separates you from them. And when they don't have food to eat, they actually will eat that mucus lining. And this is where leaky gut occurs in the beginning. When the bacteria parts leak, it triggers your immune system. They get excited. They cause inflammation. The inflammation doesn't stay in your gut. It actually leaves your gut, gets to the rest of your system through your blood circulation and will cause symptoms on your skin, in your mood, and elsewhere. Your largest immune organ is your gut. So it's really important that you take care of it. And if the inflammation gets more severe, that's how you get an ulcer. This is why when you eat, you need to make sure you keep your friends in mind and you need to share your food. And if you're not eating foods that power your gut microbiome, foods with fiber, 
you're not eating and sharing foods with your friends. So this is where carbohydrates are tremendously misunderstood. Carbohydrates are the superstar foods for your gut microbiome, but it's not processed carbohydrates. It's real food with real fiber in it. People often say they eat fiber. And if you're not hitting 40 grams of real food fiber, you're not eating enough. And you're probably struggling with your health. And this is not eating, you know, powdery uh, dietary fiber that you buy from a pharmacy or the drugstore. This is eating real food. It's not just eating salads, it's eating beans, grains, roots, fruits, nuts, and seeds. You got to eat above and below ground to really get the complete repertoire of dietary fiber. The more diversity you eat, the more beneficial it will be for your gut microbiome and the more beneficial it will be for your health. Your gut microbiome is there to help you prevent Western chronic diseases. It's also important to avoid foods with chemical additives like artificial sweeteners, like sucralose sold as Splenda. Now, some of these chemicals will be sold as plant-based and you may be wondering which is better. The problem is you're trying to satisfy a sweet tooth or sugar addiction by eating processed sugar, fructose, or other chemicals that taste like sugar. You're trying to trick your body. You're trying to trick your metabolism. Trickery just never ends well. Non-nutritive sweeteners will make you overeat later. They will also kill your gut microbiome. And really, you will never find a healthy substitute for an addiction. Limit or eliminate processed foods and chemicals. They are not good for you. They're not even good for your pet. Keep in mind, when people tell you fructose is bad, that's purified fructose. Whole fruit with fructose are great for your health because they're already trapped with fiber. It's very limited amount of fructose. Most of it is water and fiber. But when you process it, when you destroy the fiber, when you are taking out the juice, you're actually destroying the natural protection that was placed in natural foods to help your metabolism and immunity to prevent those hormonal surges, as well as to feed your gut microbiome to help you digest some of that fructose. But when you drink fructose, whether it's juice or soda, you're really bypassing that control mechanism, that self-regulation of your body is already built to do, and you're bypassing your gut microbiome, you're basically gonna absorb all that sugar before anything gets to your gut microbiome. By controlling your metabolism, simply by eating whole food with natural fiber like fruit, you can slowly reduce actually the addiction and all the chemicals that come with it. So next time, try to eat and fill your tummy up with fruits before you reach for that cookie. And you will find that you'll eat less cookie and over time, you'll be able to skip the cookie. Now, other chemical additives like emulsifiers are even harder to avoid because it's just so abundant in processed foods. They are consumed at mega tons and they're used as food additives. Potentially, they can enhance absorption of other environmental toxins. And so this is why we need to be careful and avoid them. Emulsifiers like lecithin, polysorbate 80, carboxymethylcellulose, and many others are thought to contribute to leaky gut, increasing inflammation. Inflammatory molecules even increase your risk of live bacteria crossing your intestinal barriers and giving you more diseases. Process is simply process. Minimize your processed foods. If you have to read the ingredients, you're looking at the wrong foods to eat. Save your money. It's cheaper to buy real food. Try it. Let us know in the comments below how much money you save. In 2020, everyone was scrambling to find hand sanitizer to kill germs. And some try to even use vodka and other alcohols to do it. A lot of distilleries began making hand sanitizers. And if you can kill bugs on your hands, you better believe you can kill your gut microbiome in your gut. It's best to avoid alcohol, including wine. There's nothing good with drinking alcohol. The only goodness for alcohol is to use it as a hand sanitizer when you don't have soap and water. Now, protein is a fat. Everybody is looking for a protein, but the quality of your protein is super important for your health and the health of your gut microbiome. High animal protein diets are simply associated with poor gut health. It will reduce your gut microbiome diversity and promote bad microbiomes. Animal protein 
putrefies in your gut. And you can smell it in your fart. When you eat more animal protein, your fart will just be stinkier. It smells like rotten eggs. It's literally not a healthy smell. The bacteria actually digests and breaks down animal protein into nitrogen waste. Basically, kind of like Windex, which is kills germs. It's a chemical that's toxic to your colon. It gets recycled in your bloodstream and becomes toxic in your cells as well as your brain. And this is why when your liver doesn't work well, you build up ammonia. Eating superfoods like broccoli can boost detoxifying enzymes to help your liver deactivate other carcinogens like benzopyrene from meats. But bad bacteria can counteract this benefit. So this is why it's important to decrease the bad bacteria by eating more whole food fiber and eating less animal products. Our human cells are constantly in a battle with bacteria for life, for survival. They have a chemical warfare going on. This all happens invisibly in our gut. But when our cells are losing the battle, the byproducts will show and give you visible signs and symptoms that you feel or see on your skin. But if you power your body and support your good bacteria with real food with fiber, you can actually change this around in a matter of a week. You can reduce this bad metabolism by 30%. In addition, the average American eats just way too much protein. If you have any medical problems, get with a dietitian or your physician to calculate what your dietary needs are for protein. Don't exceed it. A lower protein diet is associated with less colon cancer. They are there to protect your health, activate them by feeding them good nutritious foods. Last but not least, keep well hydrated. Nothing moves unless you have water in your body. Your body is made out of 70 to 90% water and it's important that you keep well hydrated throughout the day. It'll help you and your gut microbiome stay healthy. Pick one thing that I've mentioned to try to incorporate. Just add one thing. See you in the next video.